Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dominate Dominion number 79. We're into round one, and we have a match between Murka Murka versus Yolo Q Gaming. And uh, if you heard just now, before we were into the champion select, Nyx87 is definitely not casting with me. I'm not, I'm not really sure who it is, but it's definitely not Nyx. Definitely, definitely not Nyx. I yeah. don't know who would mistake me for Nyx, uh, but apparently it's really loud uh, in terms of volume, so... Oh, I think it was just the music is really quiet, but I can try turning a couple things down. So just let us know how the uh, how the volume is now, and if the if it was just a large differential, I will turn the music up in the next break. <laughs> well, I was glad to be casting alongside you. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot have Gandir here, so I'll be replacing him as best as I can. And you can see we're currently into band champions in the draft section. Uh, we have some pretty standard bands coming out uh, with Kha'Zix, Nelly and Zyra coming out on uh, blue team side, along with Jax and Syndra. Although, Syndra is a very odd band for a purple team. So. And we can see the Cassid in first pick there, as he got through the chat bands as well. Uh, as you can see, our chat, the chat bands were Timo, Pantheon, and Jace, Jarvan. Uh, and unfortunately, for purple team, Cassidy got through. Is almost instantly auto locked, so we will see what purple team has to respond with this. It looks like they're taking a first pick Garen, followed by a second pick Riven. So hopefully they're trying to lock him down with strong melee champions that Cassidy cannot burst effectively. Um, perhaps if they go for a strong early game, do you think they'd be able to shut out Merka Merka before Cassidy can start to get rolling, or? Or is Merka Merka going to be able to pick up four other champions that can deal with Kassin's relatively weak early game? If Merka Merka does do that, um, you can see like Garen and Riven have very strong early and mid games. And Riven has a very scary late game if she gets there as well. Um, so that is something to be considered that they, they let Kassin in through, saying, oh, we'll take advantage of his early weak game, try to push that forward. But as you can see, uh, Merka Merka is trying to cover up that deficit by picking up both Wukong and Annie, who have exceptionally strong mid-games with their ultimates. Uh, combined, they just unleash a, a devastating AoE combos that wipe out entire teams alone. So that's a very strong pickup for Merka Merka there. If I they was decide actually to looking at Wukong's stats online the other day, and his ultimate does like 20 damage per second at level 1, and then at rank 2, that just like skyrockets up to like 110, I think. It it does. It's it's really awkward in the sense that at level 6, they didn't want to give him too much damage, but the AD ratio is crazy. It's something like 4.2 over the entire duration. So, I, you can look at the base damage, but the ratio is where it's at, which is why you see a lot of people just rush like pure AD. They don't, they don't do a lot of Trinity Force on Wukong just because of the sheer ratio on his the ultimate. Uh, we see a Heimerdinger and a Olaf come out. We're probably going to see Heimerdinger bottom lane. Uh, very strong in terms of point defense and guarding captures Olaf. Another strong uh, early game and mid game champion. Uh, kind of falls off late game due to kite, but it uh, doesn't look like Merka Merka is going for a kite strategy here. Uh, Purple team is going a lot for that kind of dive and try to force their way onto points. Uh, so Merka Merka will have to be careful of that when they defend uh, top or uh, bottom lane from assaults here. Uh, we also see uh, Merka Merka picking up Ramus and uh, Renekton. Renekton has a very low pick rate on Dominion, mainly because his Fury mechanic has a little issues. Though I was kind of stymied by way of the health packs, uh, as they give him a bit of Fury now, just by picking okay. them up. Yes, yes, they, they give him about, I think, like, somewhere around like 20 to 30 Fury, I think. I'm not sure. It might be a little less. Um, so Renekton can actually go bottom lane, and with the minions and the health pack, can actually have decent Fury generation there. So uh, well, we might see him bottom lane, particularly against uh, if Heimerdinger or Singe go bottom lane. He's actually a very strong pick there. 
Um, and then uh, Ramus just has immense amount of lockdown in terms of his taunt and catching out people with the Powerball. So that's a very strong pick alongside the Cassidy in mid-game, where you just have uh, ta- Powerball into taunt, followed by a uh, rift walk into uh, Cassidy's burst, taking out just about anybody. Yeah, and so, uh, if Riven can't get a shield off in time, the only reason Riven has survivability is that she has that shield on a 10 second cooldown. You get close to max CDR, it gets down to 6 seconds, about 6 seconds. She's just going to be 100 to 0 in that time if she can't get a single shield off because she's crowd controlled. Oh yes, very definite. Um, Riven is generally very squishy without that shield, so if she's taunted during that time, she will blow up. Uh, she's not... She is not a champion who wants to enter the front line for a first. <laughs> so if Ramus forces that upon her, she is going to melt like no other. Um, so we'll see. We'll have to see how Purple Team. What what's Purple Team's name again? I can't remember. Uh, Yolo Q Gaming. Yolo Q. I sh- I should see it right there in their names. I don't know why I'm that blind. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's see here. Merka Merka, yeah, Merka Merka versus Yolo Q Gaming. Okay. So I also see uh, the Singe pick, which Singe is kind of trolly in Dominion. He just runs around doing whatever. Um, and we can see the summoners, since the summoner blockers are no longer there. Um, we, we have a full revive team versus a no revive team. So we'll see how that plays out to see if Merka Merka can use the revive to their advantage. Um, or if Yolo Q, can, Yolo Q can prove to us that a. Uh, a non-revived team can actually win a game here. And the one thing that I'm noticing that they do have going for them out of everything is that they have an Olaf <clears throat> against a very CC-heavy team. And so if they use Olaf as a way to check to see, is there a Ramus here? He can't get 30 seconds haunted just for daring to check a bush. Yes, they do have two CC-resistant members, which is Garen and Olaf, because uh, Garen has Courage, which can reduce the amount of CC that he takes during a certain time, and Olaf just presses R and ignores all CC for like six seconds. So they do have that going for them. If Ramus is not careful with his taunts, then it can become, it can become an issue uh, in team fights, as he wants to lock down. He most likely, past level six, will want to taunt either Riven, or if Singe is top lane Singed, he will most likely not be able to catch up to Heimerdinger or their t- towers. Um, so we'll see uh, if Ramus can top the appropriate uh, champions. And we are going to go into the loading screen here. Yeah, especially when Heimerdinger has that upgrade for, sorry, upgrade for his turrets. <laughs> um, yeah. that, that slow is going to be really hard for Ramus to get past, despite the fact that he gains like 300% mm-hmm. move speed at the end of his Powerball? Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. He was extremely powerful when Dominion first came out. Just to, his ability to use the speed shrines alongside of his Powerball to catch uh, champions out was incredibly hard to deal with. Um, so we'll see that. See if uh, Murka Murka can put that into good use here. And um, I can see some nice skins coming out from Murka Murka and some... A nice championship ribbon skin. I'm, I'm a very big fan of that skin. So, Although Panda Annie does receive a massive nerf on this map because she jumps onto Tibbers like right as she's jumping back to the base. And so on Summoner's Drift, you have a full 7 or 8 seconds, and you can actually sit on Tibbers' lap for a little bit and then cancel your recall. You don't have that option on Dominion, so a pretty big nerf for that skin. I always I was found that interesting that they had to kind of like speed up those animations because uh, Pool Party Renekton also has a recall animation that uh, is like sped up for Dominion or like cut short. So it's unfortunate they cannot like change that for Dominion. Uh, you see a lot of exhaust on Merka Merka, uh, which is actually going to be extremely detrimental to the melee champions because once they get into range, you just press exhaust and those melee champions just suddenly slow down and no longer have attack speed. Oh, let's see if they can... I uh, I feel like Murka Murka definitely has a strong advantage here in terms of just team composition and summoner spells. So we'll see if uh, 
YOLO Q Gaming can actually pull this one out here. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit for uh, newer viewers about why Revive is used so much? So Revive is used so much because in Dominion you are bound to die. That's something that it's very common. Um, and so the Dominion or the Revive is kind of like it's a, it's essentially like um, Summoner's Rift Flash, where it's just something not nice to have in your back pocket in case something goes horribly wrong. So if you're in bot lane, you get ganked. Top lane, you you know you miss a spell and suddenly you get CC'd into oblivion, and then you boom pop revive, go back to top, and you're back in the fight because of this the speed buff from revive. So uh, that's why revive is heavily used. It helps um, smooth out a bit of the mistakes and the the uh, finality of death in Dominion. Uh, it also helps with the revive. Uh, or the respawn timers, which is a little bit more in depth into mini Dominion me mechanics, as there are re respawn uh, windows that you can catch that are very awkward occasionally. So revive tends to help counteract that. Um, so we do see a Heimerdinger bot followed by a Renekton. So we'll see how that plays out later. But so far, we're going to see a nice windmill fight here. I don't like Yellow Q Gaming's chances here because they have four. Champions top that have no poke. We There's see the, the taunt um, coming in from Remus onto Garen. Garen's spinning in the middle of everything, but he's exhausted. And we have Robert going on to uh, empty DPD case here on Annie. Doesn't take too much. This exhaust onto Sid. She's running away in one direction. The taunt now onto Garen. He's probably going to go down. There's first blood over to Wukong. I switched to KDA. Is not a stun onto Option. He's going to try and go out of this force. Plus a little bit of damage out of Kassin. Poison Shell taking from Sins. Remember, they do not have revive though. So that means that the windmill fight is over almost before it even started. Yeah, and that's another thing about Revive. Uh, Murka Murka was able to focus down Garen, turn the fight into a 4v3. Garen doesn't have Revive to jump back into the fight with that. So uh, Yolo Q has n no choice other than to back off from that fight so, there. So would you say that after they killed him, their victory was guaranteed? Yes, you could probably say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Robert getting caught out in the middle of the map. So they're gonna be able to broken wings out of there again, spinning in the middle, and that damage is also guaranteed. But a kill is not as Man Man is willing to go back in with that Nimbus Strike, punching taunt onto Option. He is not level six yet. He doesn't have Ragnarok. Man Man's probably gonna go down to that ignite. When we're taking, he lives just barely there. A little bit of damage from the incinerator from Annie. Garen try and chase, but he's not gonna be able to. So Yoloku Gaming is realizing that they can't win some team fights this early on, and they split up. You saw Riven go top with Singe go uh, mid, and they're trying to just neutralize the points at this point. And uh, speaking of Singe going mid, getting chased by Ramus right now, completely out of my- Oh, he picked up the health relic! He did, he did, just in time. I don't think Singe will die here to Ramus, and if Ramus keeps chasing him, he will die to the gas. Uh, in the meantime, Garen and Riven are actually giving Cassidin and Annie a run for the money. Unfortunately, Ramus is caught up to them, misses the taunt on Riven, but Annie incinerates her into dust or ashes, and poor, a or poor Garen gets taken out by the Annie, and Annie uses her panda to recall safely. Oh, no, never mind, cancels that. She probably was just missing Tibbers. Yep, oh, there's the recall Tibbers. animation. Uh, and it also, uh, we talked about Ramus's three-second taunt. It also reduces armor, a flat amount of armor, alongside Wukong's Q, which reduces armor. So that's a lot of armor reduction there. We can see Wukong using his Cyclone there to dish out tons of damage uh, onto Singe and Olaf. Olaf trying to use his axes to continue fighting the fray. Singe is escaping with barely any life left. Riven using her ult to execute Cassidy before he can get away. Cassidy uses his right almost instantly, shining back into the fight. Tibber sits on Olaf's face, giving her the kill. Uh, meanwhile, Wukong is trying to slip away from Riven uh, and Garen, trying to get any run for her money there. Spin to win, trying to take out the monkey there. And there's the uh, almost one more swing. There we go, taken out. Uh, Ram is back in the fight alongside the revived ca uh, Cassidy. Cassidy doing what he does best. Putting uh, us into a pause timer. Yeah. Pretty sure that's so, what so far, does best. It seems like there's a game crash currently on Yellow Q Gaming. Most likely um, Riven, I think, maybe. I don't know. Um, but so far, we can see that compositionally, I think that Merka Merka is demonstrating their their superior composition. They have a, a nice synergy between Ramus and Wukong. 
uh, where Wukong's uh, crushing blow reduces 30% of the enemy's armor, and uh, Ramus's uh, puncturing taunt reduces armor by 25%, or 25 flat. So that's a lot of uh, armor reduction. Uh, so Wukong and Ramus are helping each other out, not to mention they're creating a nice front line for Annie and Cassidy to decide when they want to jump in and jump out. Yeah, Cassidy, of course, is very good at jumping in and jumping out, and as he gets higher levels, we're going to start seeing him ramp up in power quite a bit as oh, yeah. Karen gets completely caught out from all I think sides. I yeah, he gets, he's getting caught out from the previous fight that occurred. Kassan is just waiting for another cooldown on his Rift Walk there, and he gets the kill with an auto attack. Uh, it looks like they're swapping out Heimerdinger for Singed in the bottom lane. I'm not quite sure. Um, we've, uh, it looks like Kassan is going for a gank, doing what Assassins should be doing here. Nice Rift Walk into the Force Pulse. Uh, Singed just running away. Uh, demonstrating that he does not care about assassins. Uh, and Olaf was actually almost caught out over by the drill because he didn't have his Ragnarok up. Oh, they don't get the neutral there! So, drill so. still, still belonging to the OLQ. I think Murka Murka really wants to uh, put emphasis on this mid turret here, primarily because of the quest here. Ooh, Wukong getting, uh, paying for his sins there. Uh, he does not have revive up, so this is a point in time where YoloQ Gaming can take advantage of this to try and push the top point, which also is quest for them. Yeah, we'll Wukong may have been monkeying around a little bit too much. <laughs> well, I mean, it, he's trying to be deceptive as well, so it's, you know, nice step. My puns are not as good as yours. I'll have to keep working on that. Uh, Singe is gassing up bottom lane against Renekton. Uh, meanwhile, Riven gets caught out by the taunt. I'm not sure if this is a fight Merkin wants, wants to pick up. Annie has to use her stun to keep Garen off her. They're trying to dive the point here. The uh, offensive garrison goes off. Uh, no defensive garrison on Merka Merka. Uh, unfortunately, Riven goes down to a, a taunt and Annie burst. And Cassidy just trying to make short work of Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger with no real defense against assassins, no real kill. And Olaf, joining the fight just in time to die, uses the exhaust, but to no avail, unfortunately. It was a fight that could have been close, except they were tanking a little bit too much tower damage, and then they had Heimerdinger trying to channel the points so that they would stop taking damage, but then Heimerdinger wasn't doing any damage himself, and so they ended up not being able in the fight, and Kassen is just going to be upscaling and upscaling and upscaling for the rest of the game. You can see bottom lane, Renekton managed to get a, uh, the tower neutralized, and then Ramus joining him. The puncturing tot lowering Singe's armor so much that Renekton just chewed through him. And now we have a 3v3 going on bottom lane, Renekton going down even with his ultimate up, allowing uh, Yoloku Gaming to recapture their bottom lane. But now Murka Murka is taking advantage of this to catch Olaf out and try to pressure that midpoint again. Remember, that is quest, which will give them the quest buff, and minus, what, 20 points to the enemy po uh, nexus? I don't actually know any of the point values, but it's a 10% damage increase for the duration of it. I do believe it is a minus 20 points on the nexus value, so that is, quest is actually fairly strong uh, objective. To go. <laughs> they finally get the neutral. They did it. But Garen's spinning with that courage, Rift Rock Bird from Kasten, and a double kill for Kasten, 505, Riven coming in, Timbers, I'm not actually sure if that landed the stun, but in any case they have a Timbers to zone now, and Kong can just pick up point, pick up the, or drop the Nexus health. Let's see. Yep, looked, 20 points. Yeah, it looks like about 20 points. Uh, and it looks like Merka Merka is trying to contain uh, YoloQ Gaming into their base here and go for that 5 cap because Renekton is capping bottom at this point and yeah it does look like it's going to be a 5 cap here uh, Annie being a little cheeky with her tippers there stopping uh, some of the, the captures uh, we can see Renekton absolutely destroying Heimerdinger bottom lane Heimerdinger has to back off here and recover some of his health uh, I don't know what Yo YoloQ Gaming can do here yeah the problem is well, that's also a problem with Sims getting caught in mid lane or in the middle of the map. But they're against the Kasten, and they didn't win really, really hard, really, really early. 
Yeah, I think that's one of their issues here. Uh, we can see ooh, Wukong getting shut down there during his ultimate. Uh, Annie with the Storm Shield dishing out tons of damage. Her Bone Shield makes her much more tankier than uh, advertised as Mage. So she can just kite here with stuns and uh, Molten Shield. And you can see she'd probably take out Garen here in a second. Yeah, there she goes. Annie's just incredibly strong with that Storm Shield and Molten uh, Shield as well. Yeah, only 10 armor in MR right now at level 1. When she gets it to 5, it's going to go up to 30 armor in Magic Resist. And that's really a lot of stats that you don't necessarily expect a 100 to 0 burst assassin mage to do. Exactly. Uh, Heimerdinger going down to uh, Renekton there. Could not get away from the crazy gator. Uh, and we have another 5 cap, though. So I'm not sure what... Yellow Q Gaming is going to do. It looks like they're moving through Vision to the top lane. Not exactly the best strategy, but let's see if they can make something out of it. Uh, Singe finally has Rylai, so let's see if he can pull off some Rylai's kiting here and there. Um, they're going to try for a dive again. We see the offensive garrison go down. It wears off, unfortunately. They're taking a lot of tower damage. The uh, Tibur's stun goes down as well. Again, we see the problem with four melee here. They cannot dive a point effectively through a Wukong and Rammus. And so Singe goes down uh, with the rest of them very low, having to back off here. And Wukong um, hasn't he... even ulted yet, because it's not quite off cooldown. So if this fight goes on for much longer, he's going to have that Cyclone back up. Yeah. I just, this is, looks like just to be a cleanup for Murka Murka here, with 456 to 63. They're just basically having fun with Yellow Q Gaming. Yeah, so now they actually get a full 5 cap that's not going to be able to be contested for a little bit. And that means you're losing 5 Nexus health per second, which does tend to close out the game pretty quickly. Yep. See, uh, Cassidy and Renekton giving them trouble. The Wukong all goes down, popping up 3 of them. Wukong going dangerously low gets executed by Riven. Uh, and the game is over with that last one. Cassidy is saved by the destruction of the Nexus Crystal. Indeed, sitting at about like 50 health there. Um, overall, I believe that uh, the comp is, the team compositions weighed heavily in favor of uh, Team Merka Merka here. Primarily because they have Annie in the back line dishing out tons of stuns and damage, with Cassidy also kiting a lot. He is extremely powerful against uh, melee champions that don't have strong gap closers. Riven, Olaf, Singe do not have those point and bl uh, click blink gap closers like Xin Zhao or Maokai do. So it's very difficult for them to lock down Kassadin inappropriately and kill the him. Uh, and then you have Wukong and Rammus running so much disruption from them. So uh, uh, overall, this is just so heavily, the composition was just so heavily in favor of Team Murka Murka here. And when we look at damage delta champions, there's such a widespread difference here. It's actually Annie up ahead by quite a bit. I think maybe if, if Wukong had managed to scale for a little bit longer, he might have been able to catch up. Same thing for Kassim, but Annie with a good 7k damage ahead of the second most in the game. Yes, Annie did quite a bit of carry work there, uh, which she should. I mean, she's basically designed as an AP carry. Um, but you can see, like, if you compare blue team's over uh, damage, like, let's take Cassidy's damage, he had damaged everybody except for Heimerdinger. So, I mean, like, and Cassidy has extremely weak early game. And he has to wait for that level 6 ultimate to uh, turn on. You can just see he's still uh, out damaged just by everyone by a thousand damage on the opposite team, except for the Heimerdinger. So you just gotta kind of take that into consideration as to the team compositions and the damage output. It's just uh, Yolo Q game could not get to their positions to deal out the damage. It's too much melee, not enough poke, um, relying too much on that dive comp to uh, do the work, and Wukong and Rammus just putting uh, so much trouble for that front line there. Alright, so we're going to cut back over to a hold screen for a little bit. Throw up an advertisement. Please turn off your ad block. Help support Dominant Gaming. And we'll be back shortly with a game from round two.